From Old Smoky Bear to the tranquil San Juan and Rio Grande rivers, New Mexico has long been the conservationist's playground. Among the most diverse ecological areas in North America, New Mexico has long offered families, anglers, and hunters a treasure of wildlife and recreational experiences. The ongoing programs of the Department of Game and Fish play a major role in keeping this state wild. Please join us as we explore New Mexico's wildlife. Welcome back to New Mexico Wildlife. I'm Bob Gerding. They've muscled their way into waterways of neighboring states and are now threatening New Mexico shores. Hitching a ride from lake to lake, river to river, the zebra and quagga mussels are not only threatening the health of our ecosystem, they can wreak havoc on everything from boats to industrial infrastructure. I love Elephant Butte Lake. It's just a beautiful place. Um, and I don't want to see it damaged in any way. Damaged like so many waterways, lakes, dams, and reservoirs by an invasion of zebra and quagga mussels. These mussels are native to Eastern Europe. The invasive species was probably brought to our waterways by ships emptying ballast water into the Great Lakes region in the late 80s. This is what zebra and quagga mussels look like, small, maybe the size of your fingernail. The larva is nearly invisible, and since they're microscopic, they can float freely through screens set up to stop them. Then they attach onto any hard surface, rock, metal, wood, vinyl, glass, rubber, fiberglass, paper, plants, and native mussels. The zebra and quagga mussels thrive in dams. That's a big concern here at Elephant Butte. This dam is part of the Rio Grande project and provides power and irrigation to south central New Mexico and west Texas. If the mussels get in, they can clog up drains and damage equipment. The invaders are perilously close to our shores, already establishing colonies in neighboring states, Colorado, Nevada, California, Arizona, Arizona. The big advantage that we have here in New Mexico after seeing this, what's happened in 1986 up the Lake Erie and what's happened in the United States for all of our waterways is we can see it coming. It's an investment for us to be proactive, to be uh, uh, into the learning phase of what we can do to assist politically, financially. Um, the rules and regulations coming forward in our state. Right now in New Mexico, the zebra and quagga mussels have not invaded our waterways. These people are here from New Mexico's Environmental Preservation and Protection Agencies taking classes to make sure it stays that way. You're getting zebra mussels in uh, anywhere in the Rio Grande would, uh, would impact the whole Rio Grande, um, anything downstream of where they're introduced. So we're very serious about trying to keep people uh, from allowing that to happen. We would like to promote anything we can to uh, keep, get people aware of it, keep them from, keep it from happening. The state has begun to implement its plan to avoid the muscle invasion. Part of the plan also calls for um, development of legislation to give uh, law enforcement officers the authority to conduct boat inspections, not only at ports of entry, but also within water bodies in the state and gives them the ability to do these watercraft inspections to look for these zebra and quagga mussels since they are transported by human methods on, on fishing equipment, water vessels, watercraft, uh, scuba equipment, you name it. If it's in the water, it has the potential to be a human pathway for spread. Education, like this class, is a big part of prevention. Quagga mussels and zebra mussels have been discovered in Colorado and they're now in eight reservoirs in Colorado. Uh, there are three or four uh, areas in Utah that uh, recently show, have had positive uh, results from their plankton samples that, that indicate that there are villagers or, or young uh, mussels present in, in those lakes. Two years after the discovery, there were 50 times more zebra and quagga mussels. The plan in New Mexico is to make sure none of these invaders attach to any boat or piece of equipment that enters our water. And it's tough to find the tiny mussels. Any edge or angle on a watercraft can harbor mussels. Nooks, crannies, outboard motors, prop shafts, bolts, brackets, wires, anchors, bilges, holds. Anywhere there's standing water provides a haven for the mussels. And once you find the mussels, the boats have to be washed down and decontaminated. Prevention comes with a hefty price tag. I've heard price quotes for uh, a movable 
ramps, uh, boat washing stations from anywhere from 10, $12,000 up to $22,000. This is a portable boat washing station. A permanent station like this one costs closer to a quarter of a million dollars, and you need to train people to conduct the searches and man the stations. Nevada funded their program at about $1.7 million. Colorado funded their program at $4 million. Pay now or pay later. Whether it's tap water or whether you're an irrigator, a rancher, a farmer, a boater, a marine operator, a concessionaire at, a, at one of the lakes and a reservoirs here in the state. So uh, it's something that needs some serious attention and the sooner we can get it in place, the better off we'll be. Take Elephant Butte Lake State Park, for example. Until recently, checking for the zebra and quagga mussels was strictly voluntary, not anymore. Due to recent legislation passing, uh, the New Mexico Department of Game and Fish and New Mexico State Park Division officers now have the authority uh, to stop and inspect uh, vessels that we believe that may be a threat to New Mexico waters due to aquatic invasive species. They also gave the ability for both agencies to develop rules in order to enforce aquatic invasive species legislation at state parks or other bodies of waters throughout the state. The zebra and quagga mussels can affect the native fish population by stripping the vital food supply. And because of the way the zebra and quagga mussels digest what they eat, they can pollute the water. Some say water is more precious than gold, especially in the desert. Now it remains to be seen whether a successful battle will be waged against an aggressive intruder before it's able to muscle in. For more information and to view the New Mexico Aquatic Invasive Species Management Plan, log on to wildlife.state.nm.us and click on the Conservation tab.